Welcome, punters, to another episode of the Whispers Racing Podcast. Andrew Ransdom Day, golden ticket into the Melbourne Cup. Uh, as you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm flying solo today. Matty has been unsighted since he's Le, Le Bowl raced. Uh, he should be back next week, punters. He's just having a day off. Um, this episode is probably brought to you proudly by Wishbet. Check them out at wishbet.com.au or download the app at the Apple or Android store. I use them punters, and if you're looking for a new boogie, then check them out. Matty and I thank them for their ongoing support. We really appreciate it. Pineapple of the week last week. Unfortunately, we had a loss. Matty went with LeBowl at Gold Coast. Went like a bastard. Might have been the conditions or something wrong with the horse. Might have to check that up in the stewards report, but, yeah, it just went no good. Not Matty's fault. Uh, this week in buying shares in and cashing out, uh, I want to buy shares in the Warnable Racing Club. I want a big shout out to them for the great carnival they put on. Big thanks to their workers from their bar staff to their bus drivers to their just their standard workers working there. They did an amazing job for the three days and always they put on a great carnival. If you haven't been, I highly recommend, but big shout out for the Warnable Racing Club for putting on such a wonderful carnival. Uh, cash out. No, I don't want to cash out on anything, but if you haven't seen Tommy Papley's tweet, maybe check that out and see how poor that was and how poor some of the comments are in that about a ride Steph Thornton had at um, Queensland midweek. It was um, quite, a, quite a shocking tweet, I thought, but that's just my thoughts. So I'm cashing out on Tom Papley. Stay in your lane, pal. Uh, track stats time. Rail out two metres. Flemington should race fairly. Always good to get back to Flemington as every horse gets their chance. Uh, race three, we're going to preview this. Odds courtesy of Wishbet. Just got to load it up as I'm not too prepared for this, punters. Bear with me. We have um, Umgawa, $5 favourite. Number seven, Flash Feeling, $6. Number two, Carlisle, $7. Number three, British Columbia, $5.50. Number five, Sonora, $7. Number four, General Firepower, $7.50. And 14 plus the rest. Found one at a bit of value here. Number six, Atugali. Forget last start. It was on a heavy 10 at Geelong and just didn't handle conditions. Didn't uh, First up, didn't suit, suit as it was a bit sharp for him at the 1400 and he wouldn't have been anywhere near his fitness. Uh, what took my eye was the second up at Morfordville when he was only 0.8 lengths off the winner. Found a perfect spot in running, just couldn't accelerate, just plotted to the line. The horse that won went on. The horse that won went on to be beaten in three lengths in listed grade. Next start, third horse I believe won a country cup at Panola. So there's plenty of evidence of a good race form race here from Barrier Four. Should find a good spot behind the leaders. Give us a good yell down the straight. Last prep as a two-year-old, he ran in some good uh, races, long-distance races, but just got too far back and running due to bad barriers, and I think he's the one that we can find at a bit of a price. Of the other runners, no knock on number one, Ungawa. Just worried that he could be three wide, no cover. It's been a long prep for him. Will have to be a good ride from Willow to find a spot, but I wouldn't talk you out of backing it if you like it. I just can't have it at that price off a long prep. Number four, General Firepower. Had no luck last start, thought it was the one I wanted to follow out of the race, but worried it will be last and wide on a slow tempoed race and just due to the barrier, just too many negatives for me. But happy to play here, number six, Atugali, at a one by three play at around $19. And if you want to wait a punters, it probably drifts as they might find a few of the ones that I've mentioned. Uh, Wish Bet Promo, races one and two at all 11 thoroughbred tracks. Finish second and receive a bonus bet up to $50. Please check out their T's and C's as they do apply. Race seven here, we have the Andrew Ramsden Stakes. Oh, Andrew Ramsden listed. Golden ticket into the Melbourne Cup. Jeez, I might have to change the um, the conditions of this race because it is quite Four, which is a shame because I like the concept, but maybe we just need to get some stat 
other stayers in the race. All right, let's kick off with the odds here. Splend Tor, Splend, Splend Furious. I've butchered it. Sorry, punters. Three dollars fifty. Number ten, Point Nepean, four dollars. Number eight, Through Irish Eyes, five dollars fifty. Number two, Luncey, six dollars fifty. Number one, Warning, nine dollars and seventeen dollars. The rest. I've landed on number eight here through Irish eyes. My feeling is it should have won with any luck last start when cornering most horses were getting into their work and building full momentum. We are just waiting for a run out the back. Not the joggy's fault. It was just the barrier. Only beaten 0.3 to point in a pan and a little weight swing now, so this might help us. Third up. Oh, sorry. Third out of the race, won the Warnable Cup. Number one, Warning comes out of the Warnable Cup. So there's a few little form lines we can use here. I've mapped this horse around midfield, and if he lands where he should, he should be hard to beat. And around the $5.50 mark, I'm happy to have a bet. Of the other runners, point in the pain. I'm not a fan of Lloyd Williams' horses past three runs in a prep. They normally are rock hard fit first up. Plus, last night, he just looked, he had enough on the line. He grinded away and didn't really show the turn of foot or his power like he did in the first couple of races. So $3.90 or $3.50 now, point and opinion, leave me out of that. Number 11, Splendiforious. Nice win last start, winning by 4.7 lengths, controlled the race, won well. I just don't know if the form lines of Hanboshi and Kamiko are the right form lines to be winning this sort of listed grade. And you can never underestimate Gabe Waterhouse. So if you like it, you can back it but I just can't have those sort of form lines in this sort of race. I'm scared of number one, warning. If it brings its form last prep, it can easily win this, but I'm just worried. Second up now, first up off of the bog track, might, it's not really an ideal prep for me. And hearing the uh, owner, trainer during the week saying, don't know if they'll push on to the Melbourne Cup, so I don't know why it's running. But if you like it, go after it. But, yeah, happy to land here through Irish eyes. At around the five dollar fifty mark, listeners, if you're listening via YouTube, or watching via YouTube, or listening via the podcast platform, please subscribe to our channels, and you'll receive the episodes as they drop. Please share this episode with your friends or family. We would love to grow this fan base, but we would really appreciate your help. Uh, race nine here, we have the thousand meters here. Uh, benchmark eighty four. Odds courtesy of wishbet.com.au. We have Dosh, favourite here, around the $4 mark. Number 13, win, win some, $5.50. Number 12, easy single, $6. Number 2, how romantic, $8. 11, wick, crap away, wick crack away, $8.50. Number 10, twist of fury, $10. And 13 plus the rest. Uh, really keen here on number one, Dosh. has had three jump outs for this, and the last one tells me he's ready to rock and roll. They were all bloody impressive. Gave Winburn to Snap Dancer in the most recent jump out, and we know how Snap Dancer went in the group one in Adelaide last week. Should jump on the bunny and just win. You can find these jump outs on racing.com, but I'm really happy with the way it's jumped out here and should be winning. Of the other runners, I'm hoping number two, how Romantic has drawn the wrong part of the track in barrier two. Normally down the straight, I like my horses drawn out to middle. Barrier two might be not be the place to be. And um, Josh Richards on board. Hmm, don't know if it's ready to go. Estella Rocker form reads well from last week. Winning at Gold Coast. Jumped out okay, no knocks, but just don't know about the barrier. Number six, Young Liam has had a jump out since and went well. Run out of its skin last start over the 1,100 metres, which it wasn't suited. It's an 1,000 metre 955 horse. Running out of its skin at the moment, career peak form, good odds, and to have a saver on it, if you'd like it, at the, what odds have we got? Young Liam. Bear with me, punters, $19. So it could be something you could have a, a saver on if you like him. But I'm happy to be here on number one, Dosh. One start at the track, one win. And after this, it should be two from two. And it's just something I use down the straight punters. Just look for horses that have raced down the straight and gone well. It's just a nice little formula I, lose, I use. And I think it's, yeah, 
it works. So yeah, happy to be with Dosh right there. Around the grounds, we will go with Eagle Farm, race seven, number five, Pinarello. If you followed our podcast from previous ones, I gave this a push in the New Zealand Derby and said it would be competitive over here if it came to the Sydney Carnival, but didn't comes comes over to Brisbane now. Since then, it's New, Z- New Zealand Derby fail. Won a group two by two and a half lengths and looked good. The field isn't much harder here. Probably barrier 14 is the only knock on it, but probably goes back to last and uh, comes down the outside and wins. So that's race seven, number five, Pinarello. It's around the six, seven dollar mark off the top of my head. We'll move over to Morpherville, race seven. Eight, number five, Harley moving. Yes, once again, we'll go again, punters. Last start was 16 lengths off the leader at the 800-meter mark and then 12 lengths off them at the 600-meter mark. Only went down by 0.8. Should have absolutely pissed in if the jockey sat a little bit closer than where he was sitting last. I thought it was a poor ride. Now the jockey gets to redeem himself here. This is a little bit harder, but has to has the talent and turn of foot to win this. And reports are it might roll a bit forward. So if it does, look out, punters. So yeah, that's race eight, number five, Harley moving. Multi time. Um, we're just going to stick to the races with this one. We're going to go through Irish Eye, the place, Pinarello place, Harley moving the place, and Dosh to win. That's $46. So that's a nice little collect if we can lob that punters. Pineapple a week, no surprise. Flemington, race nine, number one, Dosh. As I said before, jumped out super and should be winning off those jump outs. So that's around the $4 mark. So there's a nice little pineapple on that, and it's a nice little collect. Next week, we're hoping to find Matty so he can come on board and join us and we can have a bit longer of a podcast. Sorry it's short and sweet, guys, but hopefully we've, I've found you a few winners. Thank you for all listening, guys. I hope, we, hope you fill your pockets up on our tips or your own. And, yeah, have a great weekend, guys. Thanks for listening.